one, something every app needs is an icon, and so we're going to make a graphic that can be used for that as well as a few other things, including putting on a background. Let's go ahead and create a new, let me uh, cancel this, file new, and I'd like us to call this our initials, because that's what we're going to use just so that we can show you how to turn text into artwork. So for what we want for an icon is going to be a square graphic, and so I think 1024 by 1024 will work pretty well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do transparent background and go from there. Uh, the icon size, the final one, is going to be 512 by 512. So we would shrink this down afterwards. Uh, but let's go ahead and show you how to make something this big. So we're going to use the T for typing tool. And instead of drawing a corral uh, like we normally do, we just want to click once and then put that initial on there. So I'm going to start off with the letter M and highlight it. Notice that at 12 point size, it is way too small to see on this large graphic. If I move to 72, that's still way too small. So let's just type in some numbers here like 500 uh, to get us in the ballpark. The other thing I'd like you to know is checking out fonts is fairly easy if you click in that box and then you can just cycle down with the down cursor or up and look for a font that's going to be able to hold some effects fairly well. Something like this. Uh, large, uh, thick font is going to do great here. So let's make this a little bit bigger. I want enough room to fit two of these letters on the screen, so I've got some room left over here. So I'm going to go ahead and move that, not put it right up to the edge, because we're going to be adding some effects that may leak over. So it can be a little closer, but not so close that a shadow or a glow or something that would go off the screen. Let's go ahead and type another letter. I'm going to put my H on there. So T for typing tool, it'll remember the last one. And so some things you could do would be to line them up, or I'm just going to put them like this for right now. now we're going to do some effects on this layer. So I'm going to start off with the M and right click on it. doesn't matter what color it was because with these blending options, we're actually going to change that right off the bat. So I'm going to move this over to the right a little bit so you can see what happens to the letter as I do it. And we'll start with something like a gradient overlay. Now if you click on the checkbox, it doesn't give you the options for gradient overlay. So you should really check, uh, click on the words gradient overlay so that then you have access to the gradient and you can change it to something else. Now some of these are going to be more legible than others. Uh, if you go with crazy, all the colors in the world, uh, then you'll have to do some special things with strokes and outlines and stuff um, in order to make sure that it's really easy to read. So I will do a rainbow one here or something like this, something that looks nice, or you can make up your own. So let me just pick one here and let's go from there. So next, I always like to bevel and emboss things because it makes them look three-dimensional very, very easily. Uh, the things you control here are what kind of bevel. I believe outer bevel and inner bevel both uh, do 3D effects, but I'm going to stick with inner bevel this time. You can see that there's a highlight color and a shadow color defaulting to white and black. So you can see it's lighter up here and darker down there. Uh, if you wanted to do something different, you could change those colors right up there. Uh, if I want this to be different down here, you should see those taking place. So I'm doing bevel and emboss. Uh, and I'm not seeing it. Oh, because it's set to screen and multiply. So these are the modes. And if you just change them to normal, then they'll just appear there. Notice that the blue, when it goes on the orange, that shadow turns kind of purplish. Uh, let's see, one more effect. Oh, the bevel and emboss size. Um, this is where you change things, like how much of a bevel it is. And this number really depends on the resolution of your entire document. So should you go too far, we really lose that 3D effect. If it's too small, it's undetectable. So you just kind of have to move these two around, the size, and then you can soften that. There are even some other contours. Um, that are fun to play around with sometimes, try out some different, you can make your own. Um, some of them are rather jaggedy, and look at how different uh, that look is, just depending on what the contour comes turns out to be. So let's go with something interesting like that, perhaps. Changes the whole look a little bit. Okay, another thing I like to add would be an outer glow. 
uh, that is going to allow us to have uh, you could do a gradient as well in the outer glow so this is where we might want to have a rainbow and then the opacity right now is set to a hundred um, and so we can really see it there and then this has a size and a spread and you just have to play with these two numbers to get the effect that you want um, of course go too far and you lose the effect uh, if it's too, this would never work because the edges would be cut off. So you want something that's going to be kind of in between. And you can change the contour of that as well. Let's stick with that for the moment. I want you to notice that I've got orange here for my letter. And then a bunch of red for the first part of the glow. And that makes it hard to read. So there's one more effect I'm going to use. It's going to make sure that this is legible on any kind of background. And that's a stroke. So the default stroke here is red, which helps us not at all because the outer glow starts with red. So it's usually either black or white to really help your letter be legible on any background. So I'm going to increase the size. Notice that's going to the inside. That's one option you could do. You could also do an outside one. So you can see that I would easily wipe out the glow. So find that balance. It's going to let us um, really see that letter no matter what the background is. If I change it to white, uh, that can help, but in this case, I think black does our best work. So let's say we've got our effects there, and we want to do the same thing for the H. Very simple, these are all the effects, and you can turn each one on and off to kind of see what it is that you've added. And I can right click and copy the entire layer style. It's right here, copy layer style. Go to the H and paste layer style and now both letters look the same uh, so that is a basic graphic I'm gonna go ahead and save this this is my initials PSD so that I'm going to keep that because this is going to be for my app inventor assets and so here it could be as part of backgrounds is not a bad place to keep your initials let me turn this into an icon first and then back up and then show you how you can add that to your background so first of all, the image, image size, our icons are going to be 512 by 512. That makes a nice square. And notice how our font and our other numbers didn't change. And now we're too close to the edge. So there's something we can do to just make this into a uh, rasterized graphic, just pixels, not editable text. And we can do that by saying layer, and then uh, we want to rasterize it. So we're going to rasterize this layer style right into it. And now notice how the H is still uh, there, but it's just a set of pixels. So I do the same thing for this layer, layer, and rasterize it. I now have these two guys right here. And now when I say image, image size, and I change it down to 512 by 512, the glow, everything, it just shrinks it down and we don't the font size and the numbers for the glow they don't matter anymore because they're gone so this would be an icon always save your icons as a png so that the transparency that's here uh, will really show up and we can call this initials and then icon i like to put that in all caps um, graphics that are going into app inventor can be dashes and underlines those are the only special characters that are known to be safe all the time so I'm gonna go ahead and save my icon and then I can either close this without saving and reopen initials I can go to my history or I can just control Z alt control Z undo until I have my H and my M with all of those effects let me close those up for you because I also want to show you how to put these over here on a background and keep those layer styles. I go to Window, Arrange, and I can tile. Either one of these will work, but if I can see both of them, it makes it very easy. Instead of copy paste, I can take the M and drop it over there. Remember, the width of our background was 1080, so something that's made at 1024 works rather nicely. We should be able to move that right into place. Here's the H, also going to move it over here. Oh select the H layer and then I can move it and that gives me options like oh let me put them side by side instead 
or uh, let's do this first. If you put the name on the name, you can then uh, have only one of them visible. If I look at my layers, see the H and the M there? So I can take the M and I can nudge it over to the left a little more. And I can take the H and I can bring that over as well, kind of center it. Or I could have it staggered or have the M lower. You have some options there. And you can even like go back and say, hmm, what would I like to do differently? Well, let's say this outer glow. This is something that you can do pretty easily. Double click on it and change the blending mode to that difference that we used before. And what you'll see is that when I zoom in here, the H's glow is interacting with the background. So it gives it a very nice effect. This especially works well when you're animating something and it's moving. But that way your glow is, uh, you can see it kind of the way it touches the background and how the colors change. If you want to do the same thing, you can just copy layer style again. Go to the M and paste layer style. And now you've got something fairly unique right there to go. You could save this JPEG as a background um, and use that directly. Or you can bring in the MH icon and put it into your app and position it and make it a button that can be clicked or all sorts of stuff. That's an easy way to turn text into artwork that can be used in your apps, as well as how to make a nice icon. And every app must have an icon.